There are a couple of different Spotify clients for Linux, and today we're going to have a look at one by the name of NC Spot. So it's not perfect. I think that it has plenty of issues, but overall, for a TUI application, I think that it is a pretty solid choice. So let's just jump right into it. So this is the GitHub page here. Now, there's nothing too interesting on here to look at, but basically it's inspired by programs like NCMPC. So I haven't used that myself, but I've heard that it's a pretty good music player. And basically the reason this exists is that it's an alternative to the official client that's available on Linux, but there isn't a version available for BSD at this point. So basically this was made so that people can still use a Spotify client on BSD without having to go through their web browser. Now, it's a fairly small application compared to regular Spotify. It's in total only 47 megabytes, whereas the full install of Spotify is roughly a gigabyte. And the dependencies aren't too crazy. You do need to have Python for building it, but the actual application itself is written in Rust, and then you need some other stuff like cursors and stuff like that. One thing to note is that this program doesn't work without a premium Spotify account, so make sure you actually do have that when you want to use this. But... Besides that, there's nothing too crazy. Now, I installed it from the AUR, I believe, so I'm pretty sure I installed it from the AUR, so let's do that. Yay-S-N-C spot. I could be completely mistaken, actually. It's been a while since I installed this. So yeah, I actually did install it like that. So just go through the steps to install that or go and install it through the manual installation process. Doesn't really matter how you go about doing it, but yeah, I like using an AUR helper, basically. We'll give that just a moment to finish off and then we'll have a look at the application. So actually while that's going, let's just have a look at this. The key bindings I've changed a little bit, so I'm not gonna really go in depth into what these are, but I will briefly mention the actions that you can do. And there is a bit of configuration that we can do, but I'll get back to that when we actually get up to that point. So let's just run NC Spot and see what it looks like. Now I've also changed the theme a little bit, so it's not gonna look exactly like this when you have a look at it, but the general layout is going to look the same. Now, it's a pretty solid Spotify application. So if you want to play music, you can just press enter. That is the default binding for that. Now, this is where we start getting into weird stuff. Now, if I press P, or I think capital P it is for the default bindings, that'll let you play and pause. Now, obviously, I've got my sound muted because I don't want to get copyright striked, but anyway. I did notice a bit of a weird problem with this application. That If we quit out of this and we reopen it, and what happens at this point, basically, is you don't have a song playing. Now, you can't actually use the play pause functionality to just play something that you're highlighting. So that's a little bit annoying. You have to press enter first, and then you can use play pause. It's not a big deal, but it is slightly annoying that you can't do that. There's a couple of things in this application that they don't seem like they were too well designed, but they wouldn't be too difficult to fix, I would say. Now, you can go between each of these different tabs with the arrow keys or with the vim keys. That's nothing too special. You have your albums here, your artists, and then also your playlists. Now, we can open up one of these playlists by pressing O on it, and that'll actually take us into the playlist. Now, this is one of the problems that I've actually come across with this application. We can't actually leave this with using the arrow keys or using the vim keys. The way you have to leave this is with a special action called back. So if we press backspace, that'll take us out of that. But back also doesn't work properly in every single window. If we were to go to the help menu, for example, by pressing the question mark key, we can't press back to actually back out of this. We also can't scroll with the Vim keys in here. We can only scroll with the arrow keys. We can also use the uh, mouse, but if you're in a terminal application, you're probably not going to use the mouse. I'm not really sure why you can't use the Vim keys to scroll in here when you can use the Vim keys everywhere else in the application. So it's a little bit annoying, but once again, it's not something that can't really easily be fixed. Now, the way you actually get out of the help menu, you can't get out by pressing the question mark key or by pressing the backspace key. The way you get out is you have to switch to another one of those tabs. Now, the way you do that from here is you can actually use the F keys to switch around. So if we press F1, that'll take us to our queue. F2, that'll take us to search. And F3 will take us back to the library we're in. I'm not really sure why library is set to F3, if I was rebinding this myself, I would probably put the library on F1. I might actually change that just after the video ends, but that's the default binding for it. So you have the option of pressing O to open up one of these playlists, but if instead of opening up the playlist, you want to open up the current track you've got running, you can press capital O. Now this menu has some problems as well, so you can't actually scroll through it with the Vim keys. Once again, I'm not really sure why, but it could be fixed really easily. You can use the arrow keys though. 
And if you were to press enter on any of these, it would actually open up. So say we want to, I don't know, show the artist. We give that just a sec to actually load and then it will show the artist information. It's going to take a little bit to do that. Okay, here we go. So you can see the top tens of the artists. You can see the albums they have and you can see related artists. So pretty much all the stuff you can normally see on Spotify. If we press backspace, that'll take us back to the menu we're on before. We actually can use the mouse for this as well. Once again, because it's a terminal application, I'm not really sure why you would do that. But if you want to do that, then I guess you can. Um, yeah, once again, don't really know why you would do that. When I showed you the other tabs, you may have noticed that there was a search window. So if we press F2 again, that'll take us over to that tab. Now, if you want to get to this from any of the other tabs, you can just press the slash key. So like you would do for a search in Vim. So let's say we wanted to search for a song like, I don't know, Shoei. If we search for that and press enter, that'll then try to do a search. Now, the one problem I have with this is it doesn't actually search your current library. So I don't think there's a way to do that with NC Spot, which is a little annoying because I know that I have Shoei in my library, but I don't really want to search all of Spotify for that. I just want to search for that directly in my library. So it would be nice to see that in a later version of the application. But like you would expect, you can just play a song from here. Obviously, I'm not going to actually play the audio because I don't want to get copyright struck. But yeah, that's pretty straightforward how that works. And the other tab, it's not too interesting. It's just the Q tab. So this works how you would expect. Now, I didn't show you this earlier, but if we were to say, play one of these tracks, there is a couple of different modes you can be in. So it does have support for doing things like shuffle and repeat. If you're ever confused about the key bindings, you can just go to the help menu and even keys that you rebind yourself will actually appear within the help menu, which is actually nice to see. Now, towards the bottom, it'll show us the keys to do repeat and shuffle. So repeat, I've got bound to R, and shuffle, I've got bound to S and also Z. Now, Z is the default binding, but I've rebound it to S just because S makes a bit more sense in my head. Now, you don't know how many times I've quit out of this application when I'm trying to quit out of the help menu. I would like to see quit actually quit from the help menu and not from the entire application, but... Whatever, it's a little bit annoying. Anyway, if we play one of these songs, doesn't really matter which one we play. I'll just mute my audio again. So if we were to press the shuffle key, that'll actually enable shuffle. Now the default binding to actually switch between tracks is the less than and the greater than sign. So as we can see down the bottom, it's just switching through random tracks now. I've rebound it to capital L and capital H because that just makes far more sense in my head. And we can also do repeat. So if we press R, as we can see down the bottom, that enables repeat mode. So that'll obviously act exactly how you'd expect repeat to work within Spotify. So once you get to the end of the playlist, it'll just keep looping the playlist so it doesn't ever stop. At this point, you're probably going to say, what's really the point of using this application? You've kind of just complained about it this entire time. Now, the reason I would say it's still a pretty good application is because all of these problems are very, very minor problems. So they could be fixed really easily. Like the quitting out of the help menu, you should be able to do that by pressing backspace or by quitting out normally. Or things like playing a song when you haven't actually started one by pressing the play pause button. Or various other little things like that. It's just a lot of little problems the application has. It's nothing really major I would say. Now let's just go have a brief look at the configuration file because it's pretty easy to do. Let's go have a look in that folder. So that'll be in your .config folder, in the NC spot folder. I believe that it generates this folder by default. I'm not going to show you the credentials.toml. I believe it is encoded, but I'd rather not show you that. Anyway, so first up, we've got the key binding section. Obviously, you're going to have to add these sections in yourself, but it is pretty straightforward. If you've never worked with the toml file, basically, you just have the section in square brackets and then the name of the section. So in this case, it's key bindings. And then you have the key bindings under that. So the key bindings are done in a pretty straightforward way as well. You have the key in quotation marks equals and then the action in quotation marks. So as I was saying before, I've rebound, play, pause, shuffle, save, a couple of different actions in here just to make it a bit more sensible, I would say. As I was saying before though, I would like to see the ability to unmap keys. So if I don't want to use certain keys, I don't want them cluttering up my help menu. And the second section we have in here is just for the theme. Now, this theme I pretty much took from the GitHub page. If we look at that down the bottom, this example is pretty much taken straight from here and I've just changed it slightly from using green to using the exact version of green used in Spotify. And I've removed the background color and just 
let it rely on my default terminal background just so it fits in a little bit more. So it's pretty straightforward how you actually set the colors for NC Spot. So you can use your normal terminal colors like red, yellow, green, blue, cyan, magenta, white, black. I might have missed something, I don't remember. And then you can use all the light variants of those colors. Or if you have a terminal that supports true color, you can also do just regular hex values, which is what I've done for the green colors in here. Now, that's pretty much everything for the configuration. At this stage, there's not much else you can configure. It does say that you can disable the nerd font glyphs, but it doesn't say which section this should be in, so I'm not really sure how this actually works. But that's not too big of a deal, I guess. So, yeah, I would say that's pretty much everything for this application. Now, I know there are plenty of other ways to do Spotify on Linux, even if you don't want to use the main application. Like, you can use something called um, Spotify, which is basically a CLI tool for interacting with Spotify, and then there's a couple of front ends you can use for that. I might have a look into one of those, because maybe one of those is a little bit better than NC Spot. But for now, I would say that NC Spot, once it's actually ironed out some of these little issues, I would say that it is a really, really good application because besides these little things that are annoying me about it, it's actually a really solid application. I've never had it crash on me or anything like that. It's always just been really solid. But that only really matters if you can look over the tiny problems that it has. Once you're actually playing music, it works perfectly fine. So if you ignore the basic stuff, I would say NC Spot is a pretty good place to start with if you want a TUI application to run Spotify. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about in this video. So if you liked this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links. I've also got my support links. And I've also got my alternate video platform. So go check all of those out. Now, I reckon that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.